Winton Rufa joins us. 23 games for New Zealand. That's all. He only played 23 games over a really long career. Began in 1983 to 1997, but this is the way it goes with New Zealand football sometimes. Two matches against the Oz. It's virtual Bledisloe Cup for the round ball game. Welcome back to the program, mate. Hi, Martin. Always excited about this fixture. We don't get enough of them, do we, playing Australia? We don't get enough all whites fixtures in general, but playing Australia, what does it mean? Well, it's brilliant, isn't it, that we can finally get to play them. Uh, it's been 10 years, and you imagine if we would have both been going to the World Cup, it would have been even more amazing. But, well, at least, you know, as you said, we, we, we've got some games. We don't get a lot of games, and um, it's exciting because of the, you know, Trans-Tasman rivalry. We saw it hey, last week with the All Blacks, absolutely phenomenal. So um, let's hope we get some action as well at uh, Eden Park. Yeah, big crowd expected too. Let's hope so. I mean, I don't know whether it's a sellout yet or not, but it's just going to be fantastic for those players to walk out there with the stands absolutely full. Like I was just going through your career, and I don't want to Google it to find out. I can't. Did you play against Australia how many times? Yeah, I had a few games. Played against Graham Arnold, who's the coach of the Socceroos, and um, we, you know, most of the time we, you know, were unsuccessful. They were, you know, they were generally always a tough side to beat. It'll be no different this time, even though I'd say that, you know, on paper, our squad is is as easily as, as good as theirs, if not even better, you know, with Chris Wood, you know, at Newcastle United starting, and then, you know, midweek we had that, the, uh, you know, brilliant situation with Marcus Stamenich yes, uh, yes. playing the Champions League with FC Copenhagen, but of course... His teammate Matt Ryan, the goalkeeper for uh, the Socceroos, was, was also playing in that Champions League game. But you know, if you look at the squads, it's fairly even. It's um, you know not like the days gone where you know there was so many superstars from the Australian. But the you know the Kills, the Vadukas, the Cahills. So they don't really, you know, if, if, if we be honest, probably the, the, the real superstar there is uh, Chris Wood, you know. And then, of course, it's a special occasion with uh, Winston Reid, you know, having his last game for the all White. I was asked the other day about this, about, you know, whether that's the greatest goal ever scored by the All-Whites. And I said, no, I think that um, the second one from Winton Rufer against Chinese Taipei to send us to the World Cup for the first time. But I'm old enough to remember that. I remember that wonderful strike, a big hoof upfield, and you just absolutely drilled it into the top corner. But Winston Reid's goal, you know, in this generation, certainly absolutely turned everything about New Zealand football on its head. The timing of that goal against Slovakia as well, Winston, I know you remember it well, mate. It was just glorious, wasn't it? Yeah, no, look, I was there in South Africa and, of course, the, um, you know, just to qualify for the World Cup is something so special, you know. We did it 82, we did it 2010. It was, um, you know, I was even over there for the uh, the game in, um, against Costa Rica. Uh, but, of course, I, I actually missed out on, on, on watching it live, even though I was a, a VIP guest from FIFA. I couldn't get uh, through the border at Dubai. No. So the crazy... Uh, immigration uh, problems. I, I wasn't the only one. There was there were Costa Rican fans. There were Peruvian fans. Fans. They were all crying at the airport in Dubai because they couldn't get on the flight. And and I had the same the predicament. <laughs> missed the game, but of course, you know, if we'd have made it to the World Cup, that would have been just a whole you know new generation of. Mm. Uh, kids in New Zealand that would have been inspired. It was a real shame. Winston Rufer is with us on the platform and, you know, one of the things I had written down to ask you about is, you know, the importance of seeing our very best players in front of us fans, you know, getting to watch you play and when you came back and played for the Football Kings and things, I mean, it was just such an um, such an experience for anyone who loved their football in this country, getting to see you play in the flesh and we don't get to see Chris that often. And now we've got Marco, who's Champions League, I think the fourth New Zealand man to play Champions League. Um, you know, kids were inspired by Sarpreet signing for Bayern, and I know you had a lot to do with that. This is what we want, and this is what it frustrates me about New Zealand football. The shop window's got to be our national team, doesn't it? Yeah, no, well, that is, it is. And then, you know, good luck on a positive note. We've got next year the Women's World Cup coming yep, here. Yep. You know, we're actually together with Australia. We're hosting it, co-hosting, and... Uh, so it's just great to get this Trans Tasman rivalry going again. You know, it's, it's been a long time between drinks, but at least it's going to be happening. And, and let's hope that we get a you know a full house uh, this Sunday.
All right, so where's the team at? You know, just looking at what you saw when we played Costa Rica, it's always a difficult build-up. We never get the, the amount of games we need. Dragon and players from all over the world. It's just how it is with New Zealand football. That particular game, you know, we'll argue about the referee like the Wallabies will argue about the French referee forever, won't we? Because the call did go against us. But how how well were we playing and what kind of level had we attained, do you think? No, look, that's, that's what is the painful thing about this. We were the better team. You know, yeah. we should be going to the World Cup. We had, you know, to be fair to Danny Hay, done a really good preparation and, and, and during really difficult times, what they were able to manage to put together and and prepare the side. And But we missed out. So, you know, we're all gutted. And at least we've got these games. And, and you know, as we've spoken about this trend. Tasman rivalry and it's this coming, you know, Sunday. Let's hope that the first fixture uh, Thursday night is is a, is a close one, so that then you know, come Sunday here in Auckland, that we you know just have a full house and just as you talked about that, just action, passion, inspiration, you know, for the young Kiwi kids to see, you know, the the likes of. Uh, Chris Wood and Winston Reid for the last time and Marcus Damanich and the other guns for the All-Whites. Winston, playing Champions League, you know, I mean, there's only a few hundred or a few thousand men that have done this anyway. To have four Kiwis that have done this, yourself and Dan, and and now Marco gets it as well. Chris Killen back in 2007. For anyone who knows their football, it's, it's a real milestone, isn't it? Well, of course, it's you know um, funny thing you're talking about that uh, the UEFA Champions League magazine are, are here in a couple of weeks' time, and they're going to be filming me about the um, you know Champions League top goal scorer in ninety two ninety three. Yeah. So five hundred million TV audience. So uh, you know we don't get many of these opportunities. So it's. Uh, it's got to be pretty cool. Anyway, just uh, I've got, we've got to show my shirt from the game and well, one of the games because we played against AC Milan, Porto, Anderlecht. It was uh, and it was at the time when it was the winning team from each league That's that right. qualified for the Champions League. It was a, it was a different format, but still amazing achievement uh, for uh, Marcus Stamenic to you know come on you know, well not to start with FC Copenhagen. In, in the Champions League uh, last week. It was awesome. You played Milan, so they were the champions, I think, at the time. I mean, that, that's just incredible to think about. And I want to touch back on when you played Napoli as well in, in the semi finals of the Cup Winners' Cup. And also, wasn't that crazy game against, against Anderlecht? Was that the one if I remember? You're about 4 0 down or something crazy, or 5 1 down or something, and drew the game? Was yeah, that, that was, yeah, that was, um, that, that, again, that was another one that's talked about. There was, uh, I was in Germany a month ago, and there was a big deal about that game as well, and I had to go to TV, and they were talking about it again. It's actually quite a laugh, but. Uh, you know, three nil down at half time, freezing cold. It was uh, mid December. Was the last game before the sort of the winter break with the Bundesliga, and um, we're at home. It sold out. You know, forty thousand, but freezing cold. And say three nil down, and then in the second half, I scored two, made two, and um, we had a miracle. Um, you know, come back and. We won five three, so it was. Uh, it's in the top twenty list of uh, greatest comebacks in, in the UEFA Champions League history. Let's hope come Sunday we see some uh, magic goals from the All Whites. Chris Wood with some, you know, magic goals. He's been unbelievable in the last years in, in what he's done at, at, at Burnley, and um, you know, also one of the top goal scorers in the last five years in, in the uh, Premier League. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, when you talk about that, Winton, the stat is, is that he hit double figures four years in a row, and also Burnley were only scoring 30, 40 goals a year, so that was his contribution, was over 25% of the goals, and I think there's only three other strikers that actually did get double figures over those four years like he did. I mean, that, that's phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, no, he's done an amazing, you know, feats, what he's done with the goals that he scored, you know, difficult with the smaller clubs, and then what you know they they have available and, and with budgets and, and are just playing against all the big guns. I mean, it's truly phenomenal what he's done. It's, uh, unbelievable. Mm. But also, it's you know we we talked about Winston Reid and then of course you know he's had an amazing career. Now it's going to be his last game for the mm. All Whites. A couple more questions, Wint. We'll let you go. Is the number of young New Zealanders playing collegiate football in the US was that stuff around when you were around? No, it wasn't. Uh, and, and then you got to remember, obviously, I. I, I 
1981 is when I went overseas and, you know, got my first contract at, at Norwich City and then we qualified for the World Cup, which was, you know, an epic story, you know, way back then. And then, of course, I was, you know, overseas and, and the whole situation with, you know, scholarships in America with, uh, you know, with university and, and study, you know, that, that sort of came later. And... Um, something that I've also taken advantage of since I've been back in New Zealand 25 years and, and working with the youth, it's it's another really good pathway. And, and we know with, you know, the likes of, um, you know, Ryan Nelson and Simon Elliott mm. and, and, and many other players who have um, gone down that pathway uh, through America and uh, and it's worked and, and they've become, you know, had successful uh, football careers as uh, professional footballers after, you know, being in the university system in America. What do you think about when if we don't qualify for a World Cup? Do you do you, you know, does your heart go towards Australia? I, I, don't, I don't know why, but I just don't I don't despise the Australian football team. I like the fact that hey, some someone from this part of the world is actually representing this part of the world at the FIFA World Cup. I know a lot of people don't like that argument, but I've never really d- despised the Australian soccer team. No, well, look, I'm married to an Australian. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it's like for me? There you go. Uh, but. It's, uh, no, it's all good. And in, in any ways, you know, as we've spoken about that Trans-Tasman rivalry, it's great. It's good for the sport, for the game, and now for the All-Whites. And Sunday against uh, the Socceroos, 4pm Eden Park. We just hope that, the, you know, the people will get behind our team and um, we'll see another epic game like we saw with the All Blacks against the Wallabies. When did New Zealand football, do they contact you at all? Do you have anything to do with this current administration? Yeah, no, they they, um, they give us they invite you along to you know to the game with some tickets and um, as they do with the, you know the other all whites uh, players. So yeah, they 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 they're trying to do their best. You know, they got next year they got the women's World Cup coming up, and um, you know that's another massive opportunity for the game. So it's um, yeah, exciting times ahead. <laughs> Andrew Pragnell, the CEO, one of the first things he did, though, was try and float this idea of changing the name of the All Whites, which I just think is absolutely ridiculous. And I know why he's trying to do it, because he's trying to tick a KPI box somewhere. But, I mean, it's just a load of bollocks, isn't it? No, well, again, we probably should change the subject. Because <laughs> otherwise you'll get me in trouble, eh? <laughs> yeah, okay, well, I don't want to get you in trouble, mate. But, I mean, I'm allowed to say that stuff because I'm allowed to say that stuff. And But it's absolutely true. You can't change the name of the team. I don't care what anyone says. Now, look, we're talking about culture and history and that, you know, uh, with what, you know, the all-whites have done. And then we know in all sports, you know, all blacks and uh, tall blacks and, you know, all the teams have sort of got these, you know, names that all sort of, you know, derive from the all blacks oh. and the successes that the rugby team has had. So it's part of our history. But, you know, we, again, you, you mentioned you're talking politics and, and, and ticking boxes and... and yeah, that's the way the world is also is you know turned. Yeah. Unfortunately, so you know, us diehard fans, we still got to you know hope that we can keep some you know culture and passion in there. Memories is what it's all about, though, isn't it? Football's about history and football's about memories, and that's what we want to see created again this weekend. You know, both matches, and hopefully it becomes. I know how difficult it is, but. You know, I just think it would be massively important for football, both here and in Australia, if we could make this regular. If this was a Bledisloe Cup of football, every year would be superb. Yeah, it is. A, it is a real shame that it hasn't been, hap- you know, able to happen in the past. I mean, ten years. I mean, come on. I know. Surely it's uh, possible to, you know, organise this fixture because uh, Australia, I'm pretty sure, will have, you know, be almost sold out, and then. And then as well, we so far with the ticket sales I've heard, for, you know, Eden Park sounds like it's going to be as well a really big crowd, and that's it's amazing that we, it's been ten years since we've had to had the game. You still kicking a ball or not? Yeah, of course, I'm always playing. You know, that's how do you think I get my glories of playing like <laughs> four year four and five year olds? And put me through and, oh, I'm still top scorer, Martin, so you know. It's, 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 you know, and then when, when a couple of them get in the way, I just, just shove them over, and then yep. you know, yep. then they're just parents are on the sideline crying, you know, crying out ref, ref, because I'm the ref as well. So there you go. So it's not easy for them. So. You know, oh look! I always love ca- catching good, up with you. I always love. I love chatting with you, mate, because I could talk football with you forever. You're such a uh, absolute living legend of this game in this country. Appreciate your time as always, mate. 
Yeah, no, it's good. It's the same thing. I love, love talking the game, and, and we don't get many of these opportunities. So it's got to be brilliant. Come Sunday, 4 p.m., Eden Park. We want to see everyone there, full house. And then it'll be even more painful when we smack the Aussies and then, then but yeah, they're the ones going to the World Cup. Devlin. Unbelievable. Incredible. The Platform.